addiction, and the brain. This is Tim Brunson, the creator of the Hypnotherapy for Life series. Addiction is a growing problem in our culture. A wide range of people can easily become addicted despite their moral values, intelligence, or degrees. As an addiction takes advantage of brain capabilities which are critical to learning and survival, the onset of this chronic disease is clearly an equal opportunity condition. Therefore, it should be looked at more as a health issue rather than a social one resulting in shame and guilt. Addictions are serious chronic brain diseases which have biological, psychological, and social implications. They are powerful because they employ neurological processes required for learning and survival. However, they use these vital systems in a way that threatens the addict's health, relationships, and may often end in criminal prosecution and even jail time. So to understand and treat this problem, both the patient and the counselor must know how abuse is encoded, triggered, and reinforced. Learning can be divided into short-term and long-term, with each using very different and distinct parts of the brain. Short-term memory is stored in the hippocampus, which specializes in briefly recording what is detected by your senses. This in turn triggers a pleasure or fear reaction in the nearby amygdala, which is the brain's emotional center. Eventually, these short-term memories are stored in other areas of the brain as long-term memories. It is here that previous experiences are integrated with these new memories. For instance, once you have enjoyed your favorite dessert, during which your reaction to taste was associated with a particular smell, the next time you smell the same aroma, the original short-term reaction will again be relived. This means that again the amygdala will trigger the emotional centers of our brain to react. It appears that triggering the amygdala is associated with both short-term and long-term memories. In order to understand the relationship between addiction and the brain, you must realize that repeated behavior will alter how the brain functions and is structured. The repeated use of an addictive substance will cause the associated brain cells in those networks to multiply. This means that your brain's ability to replay the reward response to the addictive substance in the future will go stronger and stronger. Addictions are a chronic brain disease and normally warrant professional help. However, treatment should recognize the role of the learning and reward system and seek to reprogram these natural systems in a way that the underlying trained reaction to the addictive substance, whether drugs or alcohol, produces an alternate result. Unfortunately, not all methods employ this strategy. While I do not promote the use of hypnotherapy as a standalone cure, it can be extremely valuable when used in conjunction with an addiction program or medical treatment. Why is this? It is because the same areas of the brain that play major roles in the hypnotic process are very much involved in addictions. The right orbital frontal cortex, which is just above the right eye, is believed to play a major role in inhibition and suggestion and imagination. Hypnotherapists are masters when it comes to the use of suggestion and imagination. The interesting thing about how the brain uses its different parts is that when an area which is associated with specific functions is activated, it cannot do more than one activity simultaneously. For instance, Try simultaneously imagining the taste of something delicious and something else that is completely repulsive. You will most likely become very frustrated. By using hypnosis to activate positive thoughts, an addicted person will have a very hard time triggering their typical behavior or substance abuse pattern. 
This helps an alcoholic or drug addict develop an alternative to addictive behavior. If this is done in a way that installs a different reward filling, the process of restructuring the brain begins. In a nutshell, this is why hypnosis can and should play a role in the treatment of mental and physical addictions. I incorporate these concepts in my Drug Addiction No More and Alcohol Addiction No More self-help CD and MP3 sessions. It is my hope that people whose addictions have not yet progressed too substantially and those who are undergoing professional treatment programs will find these and my other addiction titles helpful when it comes to dealing with their stress and progressing on their road to recovery. This presentation is copyright 2011. However, please feel free to share this with your friends and colleagues.